What is up my friends? One of the most effective baits maybe ever for bass fishing is the Senko. But day in after day out, we see people come in the store tragically losing fish on the Senko. So today we are gonna break down our top three mistakes that we see people make with Senko fishing so that hopefully you guys can avoid it or if you're making these mistakes, Write the course, catch more fish, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. What's up, Jeffrey the King? What's up? We are The Hookup Tackle USA. Today we are talking Senkos. Now, I say Senko, some people will say stick bait. You know, Senko's the original, this is the best one, but stick bait, Senko, whatever you wanna call it, right? Basically just a, a cigar shaped worm basically is what we're going for. And you know, Senko is nothing new. This bait and this style of bait has been on the market for decades. In fact, they created the Senko or rumor is, I wasn't there, but rumor is they created the Senko on Lake Backrack, which is one of my favorite places, a place that's very dear to my heart. And I fished a bunch of times purely by accident, right? They came down, Gary Yamoto went down with curly tail worms and eventually it turned into the Senko and they just destroyed them and it became a phenomenon. Now, one of the things about a Senko, if you guys are new to fishing or you're not throwing a Senko or a stick bait, one of the things that makes these so effective is when it's rigged weightless, the Senko has a very unique horizontal fall to it. So, you know, most soft plastic baits when we throw them, they end up having some kind of nose down fall, right? So as you kill it, they just kind of dive down nose first. And with a Senko, you get this horizontal fall and almost a shimmy to it, which is just a very natural, very unique, very lifelike presentation that's different than all the other soft plastics that they're seeing. So if you were to come into the store and say, look, I just want to catch a bass. What's the one thing I can throw and catch a bass? I don't care if it's a pond, a river, a lake, whatever, I would give you a pack of Senkos and say, go for it. And you're gonna catch a fish on these things. So there are a few tips and tricks that we're gonna to cover today and a few mistakes that we see people make over and over and over again that can limit the success that you guys are having. So we're gonna break those down really quickly, make sure you guys aren't making those mistakes. So first thing that we see people make the mistake is in the rigging. So. Definitely over the last decade, the popular way to rig a Senko has been wacky rig. So almost every time when somebody grabs a bag of Senkos, they're immediately thinking about wacky rigging a Senko, which is basically just put the hook through the middle and go. And what that does is it just allows both ends to have free movement as it falls down. It's a very natural, very easy way to go. You don't have to make sure it's straight. You really don't have to do anything. You just hook it through the middle and chuck it, right? Now, the rigging mistakes that we see people make with this is in the choice of rings that you put on it. Now, certainly you can take a hook, right? And you can stick it through the middle of the bait and just throw it. In fact, let me do that really quick. So you could certainly just take a hook, right? And you could just go right through the middle of the Senko right, and cast it out. And this is always going to be the best way to do it, right? No ring, no nothing on the bait, just straight bait and hook, and you're gonna get the most lifelike fall, nothing's in the way to impede your hook. This is a great way to do it, except 
that it's also a very easy way to go through about 9 million Senkos. So, you know, I throw all the original Gary Yamamoto Senko and when you're spending, you know, seven, eight bucks a bag, even, even if you go cheap, right? And you do Bass Pro knockoff or Yum or whatever, it's still several bucks a bag. And when you get on a good bite with a the Senko, these things, they tear super easy, right? So you get a fish, fish comes up and jumps, super easy for that hook just to rip out. Now you have a worthless Senko it goes in the garbage and you gotta start over, right? So almost every time when you purchase a Senko, this ends up being the package. Where'd that hook go? Oh, there we go. So almost every time that you purchase a Senko or that I see Senkos purchased, it generally looks something like this, right? They got the Senkos, they got their little O-ring tool with their O-rings, and they got their wacky rig hooks. Right now, I brought these out specifically, and hooks is another mistake that I see a lot of people make. That's number two, so we're going to get to that in a minute. But let's start with the rigging first. So, these o ring tools are super popular, and it's just a great way to prevent the bait from tearing. But there's some rigging mistakes that we see done on this, so let me explain. I'm sure most of you have some type of o ring tool like this in your arsenal. And if you don't, or you're new to Senko fishing, the idea behind this is basically just a hollow tool with some O-rings on it. The idea behind it is that you insert your Senko in, right? And then you take one of these O-rings in the back and you slide the O-ring down and you lay the O-ring on and now you have an O-ring there, right? So that when you rig it, now, when you hook a fish, right, now it doesn't tear and you have that O-ring to kind of help you, right? So there's definitely a use for this, but this is a huge, huge mistake in Sago fishing and one of the reasons why we see so many people losing fish. I can't tell you how many times people come into the store and they're like, man, I, I get bit all the time, but they come up, they jump, they throw it and it's gone, right? So. We're gonna, we're gonna solve this problem and explain this problem really quick. Okay, if you guys remember, when we just put the hook through the soft plastic bait, right? You will notice that the bait basically hangs on it so that as you're pulling this, right? So you made a cast and you're going to pull. As you're pulling this, the hook is coming straight and then the Senko is allowed to flutter. But your hook is always maintaining an upright position. So as this is falling and your hook's in an upright position, the fish eat it, your hook is in the perfect spot to hook them, right? Now, when you use an O-ring, you have to put your hook at an awkward position in there, okay? So you'll notice now that the hook is almost sideways, right? So as this is falling, the hook is sideways. And as you pull it, the hook is sideways again. So when they get bit and you sit the hook, What's happening is you're just barely skin hooking them. You're not actually getting the hook to penetrate into the fish properly. It's just pulling at the wrong angle. So there are a couple things we can do to solve this, right? The biggest thing, if you guys want to use the O-ring, is instead of using one O-ring, you can use two. Okay, so if we put two O-rings on there, this is a very simple fix if you have a lot of confidence in the O-ring. And what I'll do with two is I'll just make a little X with them, right? So now they're crisscrossed on there. See that? So now when we insert this hook through, now we can have it go straight the same way it would be without the O-ring, okay? Now it's in the proper position. So now as this is falling down and fluttering down, the fish eat, you set the hook, the hook is in an upright position to actually be able to hook them, okay? So that's option number one. Option number two is you can get some of these little dudes. So generally speaking, if I am going to use some type of tubing, this is the tubing that I do. Now this is made by Decoy. This is the Decoy worm holder. And basically what it is, is it just comes, it's basically like a, 
I don't know, like a hollow condom thing of nothing, really, just like a tube, right? And you can cut this into whatever size you want to cut it into, right? So I'll generally just cut maybe just a little bit bigger than O-ring piece, right? And then I can take that and I can just slide that onto my Senko. Now I generally start at the thinner end of the Senko and I just kind of pull it up right to where I want it. And generally speaking, you want it somewhere in that meaty part. But the nice thing about the tube is A, it's clear. So you notice it didn't change the coloration at all of that Senko. Does it matter? Does it matter if it's clear or if it has some black on it? I don't know. But I mean, we do so much to try to give ourselves every little advantage we can. So I don't mind going for it like that, right? And having it look a little bit more natural. Now, the reason I like that tube is instead of going in between an O-ring or, you know, under an O-ring and making it weird, I can actually take my hook and I can actually go right through that tube plastic, okay? So it's gonna go in and out that tube and it's gonna be rigged exactly the same way that it was rigged with the worm without any O-ring, without any tube, only it's tough, right? It's got that tube to protect it. You get a ton of life out of it. You get the same exact fall that you would with nothing else. So your hookup ratio is better. Your action is better. Everything is better like this. So if you are just getting into it, you're struggling to lose some fish, maybe just change up your rigging, either switch over to the tube or double up on that O-ring, you'll get a lot better success. Now, a Senko doesn't have to be rigged wacky, right? I mean, one of the best ways and probably the way I throw a Senko probably 70, 80% of the time is just straight Texas rig with it, okay? So just because you get a Senko doesn't mean you have to wacky rig it. Dude, throw it Texas rig and it works great. So if you guys want to Texas rig, this is the style hook that I use. Now you can go weightless, you can add a little light weight if you wanna have it help pull down, but most of the time I throw a weightless, I will go with a lighter gauge offset shank worm hook if I want it to fall very slowly, or I'll go with a heavier gauge, like a super line style. This is the offset worm wide gap from owner. It's a triple X gauge. So it's just a heavier gauge hook that will help pull it down. This is the hook that I've used for years and years and years. It adds a little bit of weight to it so it helps cast it, but it will change the action a little bit as well. And you merely just rig it the same way that you would rig it as a Texas rig, only now it's totally encased. You have no uh, possibility of the worm wrapping around the front of the hook. You know, when you throw a small little hook like this on a wacky rig, there's just so many possible things that could go wrong, right? So, you know, as this thing is falling and you're pulling it, the, the worm could wrap and you could get something like this, right? And the fish still eat it, but there's just no bite left to the hook to set the hook. A fish can suck it in and put it right to the crushers. And when it pushes it to the crushers, it wraps the worm around the point. So there's a lot of possibilities, even if you rig it exactly right and do the best you can to rig it, there's still a lot of possibilities that could go wrong Whereas when you rig it on a bigger hook, like a four out hook on a five inch Senko, there's very little that can go wrong with this. You've got a direct contact to a nice big hook with lots of gap. Plus it'll sink down faster. It'll help pull the bait down. So if you can get away with this, this is how I would recommend throwing them. You're just gonna have a lot better land ratio on there. Now, just a little tip while we're talking about Senkos. This is a little tip that I do a lot. Anytime I'm throwing something that's in a, a greener, like a green pumpkin or a watermelon type color, if you are using an actual Senko from Yamamoto, these things are full of salt, right? So you'll see a lot of people and they'll like dip the tails in chartreuse to imitate a bluegill or a shad or something like that. Just a quick little tip, if you take your fingers and you just squeeze the end of the plastic, the oils from your fingertip will essentially do the same thing and it will change that tip and give it just a hit of color. 
So it'll just force a little bit of that salt out and you get just a little bit of that kind of, not really a true chartreuse, but it just changes the color ever so slightly to give the illusion of a little tail there just to kind of mix and match. So just a little tip for you guys. All right, let's jump to hooks really quick while we are on the rigging. So I told you I was gonna talk about these when we were rigging. So chances are, if you have started with Senko fishing and you didn't start at a pro shop or you didn't see a video like this that was directing you towards the right hook, there's a, a high possibility this is probably the hook that you guys started with, which is the Gamagatsu Finesse Weedless Hook, right? Now, in my opinion, this is the absolute worst hook on the market. It's right up there with the Gamagatsu Split Shot Drop Shot Hook horrible hook okay if you're using this hook and you're having success then by all means keep rocking it but chances are if you're using this hook you're losing tons of fish throw them out and start over i'm going to go through some great options now the reason why this hook is popular is because gamagatsu just has amazing product placement and in theory it should be great right it comes with this you know stupid little weed guard that's on there to protect it and all these great things but if you look at the shape of this hook the way it will tie to your line right? This is the hook penetration that you get, right? So even without the weed guard, even if we took this stupid weed guard off, okay, this is, this is your gap. So when the fish bite this and you swing, you have this very small amount to actually hook them, okay? I mean, I can almost push this up and I'm still going to barely get hooked. So what happens is you skin hook the fish like crazy. You'll hook them and they'll be great until they jump or till they pull. And there's just, it never really penetrates past the barb. It's just very skin, very surface level hook penetration. And so you lose fish like crazy. So if you guys are going to wacky rig, let me run through a few hooks that are much, much better that we've been using for years and years that have great success, okay? Let's start right here. For ages, the Wacky Rig hook of choice has been in decoy. So the Cover Finesse and the Big Bite Finesse, either of these are great options. So the Cover Finesse has been honestly the hook that most guys have used for, you know, probably better, almost two decades now, really, since this hook has been on the market. And the reason why this is a better hook than the one we just talked about, and you guys can figure this out on your own, right? Try different hooks or look at them on your own is even if you take that weed guard away, the way the hook is pointed, remember how shallow the other one is? Look at how deep this one is. If I push on this, it's gonna go all the way through past the barb, right? So it's gonna literally all the way through. Once it's past the barb, it's really hard for a fish to toss a hook, okay? So a couple great options from decoy, Ryugi makes some great ones as well with the talisman hook. So they make a heavy guard and a regular guard there. And then over the past couple of years, you know, stinger type hooks have become very popular. So they're a little bit longer. So, you know, if you're just a huge Gamagatsu fan, you know, Brent Stinger hook is a great one. I like the owner sniper finesse, no offense Brent, but this one's a little bit better for me solely because it kind of steals from the VMC Nico rig hook and then it's a little bit offset. So you notice it's almost like that original kind of true turn. I don't know if you guys can see it on there, but see how the hook point kind of is offset from the actual shank of the hook. So when the fish bites and starts pulling away, you literally just lift up the rod and the hook kind of notches itself exactly where it needs to go. So any of those are much better options than that Gamagatsu. Here we go, Jeff, we just got 100 dislikes. Talking shit about Everybody's Gamakatsu again. Favorite hook that just loses fish like crazy. So try any of those hooks out. You guys will have a lot of success. All right, and then the third mistake that we see guys make all the time is they get pigeonholed into throwing the same exact bait. Okay, so a lot of times the Senkos come out in the spring, right? The fish start moving up and when they first move up from their winter holes and they start moving into the shallows to spawn, they're moving slow, the water temp's still low, they're lethargic. So a Senko is just a natural bait to throw. I mean, it makes sense in our minds that, okay, here's something I can throw and it'll just move really slow and very natural. And it's a great one for picking apart the shallow water. But even though it can catch fish year round, there are times when throwing a different style stick bait 
can actually get you more bites. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of the other ones that we use in our arsenal, just to maybe broaden the horizon a little bit. So obviously day in and day out, the original Yamamoto Senko is the deal. And I just mix and match colors and size based on what it is I'm doing. Five inch and six inch are the normal standard sizes for me. They're great for wacky rigging, they're great for Texas rigging. I'll go to a seven inch if I need just a real big presence. I'll go down to a four inch if I need something super finesse, more like spinning rod size. But I find that the five inch and the six inch are easy to throw on casting gear. Just they're the best all around two sizes. But the Senko is gonna fall very, very slow, right? So sometimes you need just a little bit faster movement. And that's where you could go to something like the Depths Death Adder Stick. Now, it's the same basic idea, same basic concept as a Senko, right? You'll notice it's basically just a round cigar shaped bait, but it's got a little more, it's got a little bit more, you know, junk in the trunk, right, Jeff? And we all like it, a little bit more booty to it. So that booty is going to basically help it fall a little bit quicker than a traditional Senko. If you look at the taper there, Right, you can see that it's just much thicker in the back end and it's just gonna give it a little bit more power. So if you guys are fishing in current, if you wanna get the bait down into a little bit deeper water, I mean, you can throw a Senko into 30, 40 feet of water. It'll get down there, it'll sink as long as you wanna let it sink. It just takes a really long time, right? So you could throw something like this, it's a little heavier plastic, a little denser plastic, and it will get down there much quicker for you. So. When you need just that little extra weight for me, it's current in deep water. The Death Adder Stick is definitely one that I will add. Now, the other one that I'll use a lot, and this is one that's definitely become very popular, is the OSP Dough Live Stick. Now, I like the fat version when I'm fishing it like a Senko. So when I'm using it in more of a horizontal approach, more of a weightless, just kind of, you know, dead fall flutter. What's nice about the Dolive stick is it's kind of a hybrid between a Senko and a Fluke. So you notice it's got this nice big meaty front end, but then it's got a thinner tail, right? And what's gonna happen is as this thing flutters, it's gonna have that same kind of horizontal flutter, but this tail is gonna just quiver down. It's gonna give more action. So, you know, your basic options here is, you know, kind of all around with the Senko a little bit heavier and faster fall here, and a little more action here. Now these come in a four and a half inch size, which is the perfect kind of all around size. And again, I just mix and match. So, you know, green pumpkin colors when they're feeding on crawls, bluegills, that kind of stuff. Shad colors when they're feeding on bait fish. Pretty simple, just keep it simple. But this is a great one to add to your arsenal that can get you more bites when the fish are less lethargic and a little bit more juice. The water temps rise, as they're chasing bait, as they're getting a little bit more aggressive, the Dole Life Stick can get you a few extra bites that the Senko won't. Junk in the trunk? Junk in the trunk, baby. You don't, you don't like my junk in the trunk? Junk in the trunk. That's the deal. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully it shed some insight uh, to some of the mistakes that we see and hopefully it'll prevent you guys from making them. I would love to hear any feedback and other mistakes that you guys have made or that you've experienced uh, so that we can all kind of share the knowledge and grow the community. So please, by all means, share down in the comments below. And if you have questions on anything we covered, definitely drop them down in the comments and I will get to them. Jeff will leave links to all of the baits and the riggings and the hooks if you guys want to check any of them out closer. And until next time, guys, thank you for the support and thank you for your business. And we will see you soon. Peace out for now.